Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm talking about all the horror movies I watched in August. Yes, that's right. It is September. Thank fucking God. Because we are moving into spooky season, into fall. We're gonna get cool weather that will justify me wearing this hat. And I'm excited about it. I'm pretty excited about it. So this last month was a pretty good uh, viewing experience for me. I watched a shit ton of horror movies more than I normally do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, no, not all of these are horror movies. At the beginning of the month, I watched Freaks from 1932. This centers around a traveling circus full of freaks and this one woman who takes advantage of one of the freaks marries him for his money and then tries to kill him and the freaks are not having it okay they seek their revenge and it's terrifying it's absolutely terrifying what i love about this movie is that it shows the the human side of the freaks and it shows us the monstrous side of the the normal people it shows us how mean and horrific these people are or can be to other humans it shows it's just i love what it what it represents it's not just trying to be shocking for the sake of shock value it's it's a commentary on how these people are treated just because they look different and it's a quick 62 minutes that's that's a good storytelling right there when you can get a story you get there's so much detail to this and so much so much character development in just 60 minutes i think it's a story to learn from but yeah i think that the original story might have been longer than that and todd browning the director had to shorten it for the studios but i think it's great on its own so i highly recommend that one next i watched the game from 1997 for the first time this is a psychological thriller from director david fincher and it stars michael douglas as a billionaire man who he gets involved in this game this odd mysterious game for his birthday and it has some deadly consequences i really enjoyed this one it was fast-paced and unsettling and disorienting and I didn't know where it was gonna go I didn't know what was gonna happen and it's one of those stories where you don't know who to trust you just feel so unsettled and uncomfortable the whole time and like anything can happen and there's that paranoia that is it's just steeped in paranoia and I loved it I think Michael Douglas did a fantastic job Sean Penn is in this as his brother who's also great and I just think it's a really good thriller and it it's on Netflix, and I don't know why it took me so long to watch. Then I watched The Clove Hitch Killer, which stars Dylan McDermott, and this centers around a young boy who finds some stuff in his dad's possession, and he starts to suspect that he might be a serial killer responsible for murdering 13 girls 10 years prior. This is a really dark story it's really interesting and it has some haunting moments i don't want to give anything away because apparently i spoiled stuff before but i think it's pretty obvious what this movie is about it's just dark and i think the performances in this are really great especially from dylan mcdormand and that is on netflix as well also on netflix is sweetheart from 2019 this is a story about a girl who is washed ashore this mysterious island and she basically has to fight for survival because there's this creature that's also living on the island and it comes out every night to feed and i thought this was really well done i thought the main character was just a strong badass female that i would love to have on my side i thought there were some really stunning visuals in this and creepy visuals and they did some really cool things for what they had and i had put this one off for a while because i wasn't impressed with the the poster but don't judge a book by its cover, you know? Then I watched The Killing of a Sacred Deer, starring Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman. And that movie is weird. It's weird AF. I don't even know how to describe it. Colin Farrell is this weird as fuck doctor who has a weird obsession with having sex with his wife while she's like... <laughs> while she's like under anesthesia, like she's a patient, which is creepy. And... <sighs> There's this boy that he gets wrapped up in his life because he has a history with the boy's father. He was a patient of his and this boy gets wrapped up in their lives in a dangerous way and it's just weird. It's just very weird. It moves very slowly and the it's just so I don't even 
I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know if I enjoyed it, but it's one of those things where you can't look away and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? And Colin Farrell just made me so uncomfortable and I know that's the point. It was weird. Was it good? I guess. I guess. I don't know. Then I watched The Swarm from 2020 and that's also on Netflix. This was recommended to me by someone on TikTok and it's about a woman who is, she's like breeding locusts, I believe. Yeah, she breeds locusts as high protein foods, but has trouble getting them to reproduce until she finds out they have a taste for blood. This is a really interesting film. It's a slow burn. It is really a character study and it has some creepy bug scenes and body horror. And I really enjoyed it. I don't want to say too much, but it was a nice surprise and I think you should check it out if you like slow burn horror and bugs. Then I watched Horror in the High Desert on Tubi. This was another film that was recommended to me from somebody on TikTok. This is a found footage horror about a, an outdoorsman, a nature enthusiast, who basically goes missing and this is like a mockumentary detailing what happened and this is a really slow one and it takes a while to get there but when it does it scared the shit out of me i was like Ugh. if you love found footage horror i think you'll be into this because it's just one of those where you're put in the scenario of the person and you you can't really see what's going on and then when it hits you it's like ah i'm trying to be vague here but it was really interesting and it was quick i like finding gems of found footage so found footage horror and that's one and it's on tubi another film i watched this month was ringu and i watched this because i read the ring and i wanted to compare it to the book for a video which i can link down below but the ring is a classic japanese horror story that centers around a journalist who's investigating a mysterious videotape that kills anyone who watches it seven days later. This is different from the book because it focuses on a female lead character while whereas in the book lead character was male. I really enjoy this movie. I personally love the remake, the American remake, over this just for nostalgia reasons. The Ring remake was the first version I saw and that, that movie affected me so much as a kid so that I like a little bit better than this but I, I think Ringo is good. Then I watched Val, which is a documentary on Val Kilmer, and it's based, it's biased because it's presented from Val Kilmer's own footage. He was a producer on this, so it doesn't go into a lot of the negative stories on Val Kilmer. It's It shows him in a very positive light. However, I think what the filmmakers were trying to portray or convey here, they did very well, and it made me cry my goddamn eyes out. I was, it was 11 p.m. and I found out it was on Amazon and I was like, oh, I want to watch this, but I got to go to bed. I'll just watch a few minutes of it. And then I stayed up and watched it. And then I was bawling my eyes out at 2 a.m. because it's just a sad story of what happened to Val Kilmer. Now, if you don't know, he had, he was diagnosed with throat cancer and now he can't speak. And it's just sad to see somebody so talented to lose his ability to do what he loves. Watch the documentary. It's, it ha he has a like feel good message in it, but it, it's hard to watch. It's sad. Then I watched Bleed With Me from 2020. This is on Shudder and this centers around a woman who is spending the, the weekend with her friend and the friend's fiance or whoever and she starts to suspect that her friend is drinking her blood. This was another slow burn psychological horror where we don't really know what's going on. We're only seeing things from this character's perspective and she's a little unreliable. So it's like you don't know if what she's seeing is actually happening or if she's blowing things out of proportion or if she's mentally stable and it's it was interesting i i just didn't really love it so i don't know i i do think it's an interesting watch for the characters and it was a very unsettling atmosphere so i did like that then i watched the call which is also on shutter and this it takes place in the fall of 1987 and it follows a group of kids who they start to they play pranks on this woman who is one half of a couple and she was apparently responsible for one of the kids their kids their sister disappeared when she was younger so they basically torment this woman every year and then one night uh something happens and these kids are called to to the house to to basically they have to make a single phone call in this house and stay on it for like 60 seconds in order to win money and then it just goes from there this one started off really strong for me i liked the setup it seemed like a fun 80s throwback in the same vein as stranger 
pictures of things and then it just kind of got a little weird and just it, it just was all over the place towards the end so I didn't love it but I love I loved the setup I thought it was cool and Lynn Shea's in this Tobin Bell's in this and they're both fantastic and pretty much everything they do and there were some moments that I thought were cool because there's a lot of stuff that felt like dreams like it felt very reminiscent to A Nightmare on Elm Street, that dream world to me, but not as good. I liked the setup. I didn't like where it went. Then I watched Shivers from 1975. Now this is a David Cronenberg film and it centers on a high-rise apartment that uh, this doctor was uh, performing experiments on a girl with a parasite and then the parasite gets loose and starts infecting everybody in the building and makes them sex-crazed, sex-crazed people who that's how they pass on the parasite by having sex violently I guess I think this was one of David Cronenberg's first movies and a lot of people really like this one I wasn't a huge fan I think it was an interesting idea I like the idea of a parasite going from person to person via sex I think if there was a social commentary there somewhere that I uh, was lost on me but there's some really cool scenes like there's a scene where the woman is in the bathtub and the parasite is like a worm and it crawls through the bathtub to uh, attack her and that scene is definitely used in Slither by James Gunn and I thought that was cool. He was clearly influenced by this movie. Those those things were fun. But this is another, another check on my David Cronenberg list. I would never watched his films before because I was always worried about feeling super uncomfortable but I actually really like him so I'm very proud of myself for my David Cronenberg journey. Yay to me. Then I watched Peeping Tom from 1960. This story centers around a loner named Mark who works at a film studio during the day and at night he takes Reese pictures of women and he's making a documentary on fear and he goes to unique lengths to get what he wants. Yeah, he kills them. <laughs> He kills them while he's recording them. It's just an interesting story on voyeurism and where you're the voyeur watching this happen, like, you know, as you would with movies. It just puts you in an interesting position and the way it's shot, it opens up with you as you're the camera person, you're following as he murders his victim and it's just really creepy and unsettling. And I love stories that are centered around that voyeuristic voyeurism theme. I want to do a whole video on that. Then I watched Christine from 2016. Now this stars Rebecca Hall as she's playing a real life person named Christine Chubbuck who was a 1970s news anchor who suffered from severe depression. Something, a huge event happens while she's trying to further her career and it's really sad. It's, it's dark and Rebecca Hall is great in this. She gives a really moving performance and I highly recommend it. That's on Tubi. Then I watched Candyman from 1992 in preparation for Candyman 2021. Now this stars Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen. Virginia Madsen is a college student who's investigating urban legends for her college thesis and she learns about the Candyman legend and then she gets wrapped up in it and her world is turned upside down by Candyman. This film is a classic. Candyman scared the shit out of me when I was little and I hadn't rewatched it since I was little because he was the only one that scared me. I He scared the crap out of me and he still does. And this, this film focuses on themes of racial injustice, oppression, all the themes that you find in Candyman 2021 that people are complaining about being too political. Candyman was political. And I watched Gunjum Haunted Asylum from 2018. This is another found footage that I didn't know about and somebody recommended to me on Twitter. No, TikTok. And it surprised me. It follows a group of people. They're filming this haunted show for YouTube and they stay at this asylum that is infamous for being haunted and they film their event on a live stream and things go wrong. And I thought it was so well done. People were saying it was the scariest film they've ever seen and I was watching I was like oh this isn't that scary it's just straightforward and then it gets into the scary stuff and it's just like a slow build up to that but when they get there it's great it's good they it scared me it legitimately scared me it does nothing really new or inventive but what they did they did well and effective there's tons of effective scares in here and I really recommend it it's on Tubi and it was a fun watch then I watched Someone's Watching Me from 1978 and this was John Carpenter's I think it was one of his first movies. It was a made-for-TV movie starring Lauren Hutton as a woman who's being stalked by a man that she doesn't know and basically he basically torments her life. And then he went on to film Halloween 
right after this and he said that he's really proud of this film and he learned a lot of techniques from this film to use in Halloween which you can see when you're watching this like you he'll focus shots where you're the killer which he also used in Halloween and tricks of lighting and darkness that he definitely used in Halloween. It's all in this movie and I thought that was really cool to see. I thought this movie was really well done, especially for a TV, made for TV movie, and Lauren Hutton is a great character in this and I highly recommend it. It's on Amazon Prime. Then another found footage horror that I absolutely really enjoyed is the lost footage of Leah Sullivan from 2018. This surprised me. It centers on a girl named Leah Sullivan who is doing a project for her college thesis and she is basically putting together a documentary about this this family that had that was massacred in her hometown like 30 years prior and she teams up with a local police detective or police officer to investigate now, I loved this because it's set in Massachusetts, which is where I'm from, and it was low budget, but it didn't feel low budget to me, and I really liked the characters. I felt like they felt real, and I thought that the main character was charismatic, and the chemistry between her and the police officer is fantastic. Like, you can just feel their connection, and then I found out they were married in real life, so it totally makes sense. It's a slow build-up where you're, you're uncovering the mystery along with them, and and then it all culminates to this really creepy climax that might not be for everybody, but it was for me and it scared the shit out of me. I was scared to go to bed after. So I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. It's on Tubi. And those are all the movies I watched in August. Let me know what you watched down below. If you've watched any of this, let me know your thoughts on Candyman. If you can give me some suggestions for your favorite films that are focused on voyeurism, I would love that. Any found footage horror, hidden gems, like I'm not talking about Blair Witch, like the common ones we all know. I want to know about some we haven't heard about because I love that shit and I want to watch that. So please let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.